on an occasional basis. Those activities which are to be done on daily basis are called as Nitya Karma. Those which are to be conducted occasionally, once in a while, they are called as Naimitri Karma. So, what we are doing today, the Ganesh festival, is Naimitri Karma, which comes from the Purana, and Puranas are an expansion Upapuru Manam of the Veda. Therefore, friends, if if Veda was not there, then this particular festival will simply become only a reason for us to gather and have fun. But the very fact that it becomes a ritual, it carries a certain gravity, it carries even more meaning. So we are gathered over here and Lokaman and Tilak. I have five minutes. <laughs> yes. Otherwise somebody may blow a whistle from the heart. How can we see people here? Why do people believe what it is? So Lokaman and Tilak brought this. Ganesh festival, which every Grahastha is supposed to do. Ganesh festival is not something that what is done on the streets by community. Ganesh festival is a festival or a ritual which is to be conducted, which is to be followed by every Grahastha, every household. It is not a privilege only of you. Or you can excuse yourself by saying, well, I'm not going to do it, my, my, my uncle does it. <laughs> it is something to be done by every individual, individual in the sense, every grass. A man who has accepted a woman as his wife, not so that he, could, he can have pleasures or simply raise a family, because he promises her that, come on, walk with me and let us discover meaning of life, what is called as dharma. You walk with me. And that's why in Hinduism we have the term dharma patni. It is not, it would have it been said just patni. But the reason why he accepts and he says, come on, let us walk together, is because both of them have decided, let us walk on the path of righteousness. Dharma. Be, be my sahayak, be, be an accomplice to me, be my support so that I can walk this path of righteousness. And hence we have dharma bhakti as the word. Man alone is not capable as long as he has not accepted a woman to walk on the path of dharma, till then he cannot. He may be a brahmachari, but he is still not a grihastha who can say that I am going to do dharma. <coughs> so this particular festival falls under one of the naivitic dharmas. During the British time, when we faced where no political gatherings or people could not gather together, ten people were not allowed to gather because that gathering would mean a police arrest. Lokamanya Tilak, with his intelligence, said that the Queen's Charter is there, which says that the British government or the East India Company should not interfere with the religious matters of Indians. So he said that Ganesh festival is a festival which we are celebrating, which is our religious activity and here people come together. He created a platform for people to gather and from there began Sarvajanik Ganesh also. Sarvajanik means it is of the community. It is meant to be your household. Every household or every grocery is supposed to do it. He said let us bring it together and thus people could come, discuss and he brought about 
the awakening. And therefore, Lokamadya Tilak is also called as the father of Indian unrest. The father of Indian unrest. We are, we have gathered over here today for this Ganesh festival. And I thought that I will take this opportunity not only to talk about the forthcoming Badrinath, the Chatham Yatra, but also enlighten or discuss this small little thing about the Ganesh festival. Perhaps our uh, uh, priests are more informed to talk to you about the Pauranika reference from the Puranas about the Ganesh, Ganesh festival. But here is something that I have to say. No friends. Amongst the various Tirthakshetras of India, four of the Himalayas are very popular. Badrinath, which happens to be the shrine of Bhagwan Narayana. Kedarnath, which is the shrine of Bhagwan Shiva. Gangotri is the shrine of Gangaji. And Yamanotri, which is the shrine or the starting point of river Yamuna. Yamuna. So these four shrines are called as the Chardham of Himalayas. Badri Narayana is located not only just in Himalayas, but there is a small little village which is called as Joshima. This happens to be the northern mud which Shankaracharya established. Just as we have Shrungeri, Uri, Dwarka in the three directions. The one in the north is in Joshimat. Actually, the, this village Joshimat is an apabhramsha, is a mispronunciation of the word Jyotirmat. It actually was Jyotirmat. Jyotish, Jyotir, Jyotir became Joshimat. That is how it is. In this particular place is a very old shrine of Lord Narasimha. This happens to predate even Shankaracharya Bhagavan. Most of us are not even aware of our Indian history. How many of you can really say that you, you have heard about King Lalita Aditya? How many of you have heard the name King Lalita Aditya? Have you heard? Yeah. Look at that. How ill I would not say illiterate, how ignorant we are about our own culture. Does any of the Indian who has gathered, who is sitting over here, does anybody know that once upon a time, the entire Indian culture or the, the, the kingdom of India extended up to Iran? You know. Do you know under whose regime Iran? That's why even today, up to right up to Iran, when they do the excavations, the archaeological uh, people, scholars, they are able to find the Yadyakunda right up to Iran. These are the marks that have been left behind in the in the history. It is in Lalita who ruled from Kashmir from Kashmir, he had expanded his kingdom up to Iran. The mountains are called as Hindu Kush, that is, I mean, Pakistan is just a new baby. <laughs> if at all you have to say, what is for 72 years, what more? India gained freedom 72 years ago, but India is not 72 years ago. Indian democracy can be 72 years old, but India can, has it, you will have to say, India is more than 10,000 years. When none of the civilizations, none of these cultures ever existed, or maybe existed only as tribal cultures. 
we did not have. That was the time when we, 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 we were developed. Well, friends, it is Lalita Aditya whose kingdom expanded right up to Iran. It is the family deity of Lalita Aditya which is mentioned in this Charitra, which happens to be this Narsimha shrine. So now this is more than two, three thousand years old. This particular shrine, because we do not know, most of it remains, most of the time, those mountains remain under snow. So we people don't even go. Well, by the way, I must also tell you that these four shrines of Himalayas are open only for six months of a year. Because other six months they remain covered under the snow and ice. We are conducting this yatra to all the four dham, Badri, Kedar, Gangotri and Yamunotri, to all these four shrines. But before we can go over there, we are doing a five-day Narsimha Yatra.